Hello, hello everyone. Uh, happy Sunday to you. Uh, it's me, Whimsy. Yay! Your very own Whimsy. So uh, today we're going to do a very quick remote. Um, there's a lot of questions people had, so I'm going to try and get through them as quickly as possible. Um, so last night I had trouble with the remotes. Uh, I've been kind of run down. Uh, I've been nursing uh, one of those uh, coughs that go on forever. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so the last couple days it's been hard for me to remote. I had a very, very brief remote last night, and we'll get to that. A uh, couple questions about feeling empathy, and there's a lot of anger that's been directed at me uh, because of the empathy. So let me explain the technique. Uh, the technique I use is similar to the technique that actors use uh, who study a character uh, to try and uh, give you some perspective. This is an aspect of metaphysics where you study something long enough and then you enter another state or the rabbit hole where you begin to access information that does not seem to appear to be apparent. And the, the whimsy ra rabbit hole is uh, what, we're, what we're playing with here. Uh, it's where fantasy meets reality. It's where uh, a person may uh, study the news, like I do, I study the news. I, I try to look non-biasedly. And I, I look at everything. And then I also look at research papers on different subjects, uh, particularly after I've gotten a remote that I can't explain. I'm like, what are they talking about reneging on our promises? And so I'll go back and I'll, I'll, I'll Google it, so, oh, that's, because sometimes I, I take back information that I don't entirely understand. So uh, that is why I feel empathy or compassion for people who uh, do, do things that are inhumane or horrible or whatnot, because during the remote, I am attempting to be in in the person's energy and, and to take on the thoughts and feelings of the other person. So if the other person is depressed, if the other person is suffering, I will feel it as if it is my own suffering. And that is, that is empathy. That is also the path of the bodhisattva or the person who takes on the suffering of the world in order to transform it in, and to uh, lift up the world. So we want to be careful also not to gossip. So if I'm saying that I sense or I feel this or I have a vision, we always want to temper it by saying that this is a tarot uh, card reading and to take it with a grain of salt because uh, we do sometimes discuss uh, uh, certain things about certain people. If I get a remote and I feel like it's really private information, I won't share it. Uh, there's certain things that I'm, I don't share on the channel just because I think it falls into a gray area in terms of gossip. I don't out people's orientations or anything silly like that. I don't think that that lends anything to the conversation. So that is empathy technique. Like I said, actors use it. Great actors use it. Great actors will, uh, I think it was uh, um, Meryl Streep who said that she gives life to souls as an actor. And, and uh, so uh, this ability to truly uh, inhabit a character uh, definitely is something that, uh, it's a technique that actors use. What I think is amazing is the metaphysical aspect where you, where, um, you enter into a deep uh, state of relaxation and then you find yourself in situations where you begin to see things that there's no known explanation for. And that rabbit hole, that met metaphysical rabbit hole where fantasy meets reality is an area that physicists and uh, people who study this sort of thing find fascinating. It is the fanciful, whimsy rabbit hole that anyone who does uh, deep meditation finds themselves is entering the multiverse and uh, we shake our heads and say how at what point does fantasy become reality and at what time do, uh, at what point does reality become fantasy and it's the it, it, it's uh it's pretty cool it's pretty cool so uh, a little bit about uh a couple things First up, I want to talk a little bit about the FSB, formerly the KGB. Uh, people had had questions. 
uh, and uh, I did do a remote on them, and I was able to pick up uh, information from people within the ASB that we are allowed to know because I always ask permission. And uh, basically how it works is that if they are targeting somebody or if there is somebody that they are concerned about, it falls into various different categories. Uh, for example, if you are a former SB officer who has turned and you're now uh, an, an informant for the West, that falls into a very different category than uh, a, a person like uh, Nastaya Ripka who was perceived of by the SB as collateral damage. So if you, if you join the SB, or excuse me, the FSB, <clears throat> if you join the FSB and you take uh, and you are committed and you basically uh, take your vow, for lack of a better word, to be an FSB officer, and if you uh, sell information or offer information to uh, the enemy, then you basically know how this is going to go down. You, you're going to get killed. Um, they they will take you out. That is the cardinal sin of the FSB. If you if you betray the FSB by turning, being a turncoat, they will find you in in London. They will find you in New York. They will find you wherever they are, and they wherever you are, and they will take you out. So that is enemy number one. An FSB officer who uh, is a turncoat is enemy number one as far as the FSB is concerned. Uh, the next person that they would target would be opposition uh, leaders. Anybody who uh, speaks against uh, the oligarchs, Putin, uh, the, um, the people who are part of the oppo opposition are also targeted. Uh, but they're not number one. Number one is anyone who is in the FSB who betrays the FSB. Number two is opposition leaders. Number three is writers and agitators. This would be an example of this would be Pussy Riot. Uh, we make a public, uh, they will make a public, uh, they will publicly humiliate them, throw them in jail, uh, but they won't necessarily kill them because it's not the same rank and they don't have the, they're not selling private information like a turned FSB officer. And then the final category is collateral damage, and that's Nastaya Ripka. This is somebody who theoretically we could manipulate. This is what they're saying. <laughs> uh, they could manipulate such a person, threaten them, and possibly use them uh, as a compromised person. Now, uh, someone like Nist uh, who's collateral damage can also might also be killed afterwards. Uh, if they became uh, a threat to uh, the FSB. But for the most part, uh, it's usually not, uh, it, it, it's not ranked the same as, say, murdering an opposition, lead, poisoning an opposition leader or poisoning a former FSB officer or spy who turns uh, information. So <clears throat> they did allow me to see the differences and to uh, in, in terms of how the FSB views it, so uh, will Nastaya Ripka be killed someday? It you know, it's possible. I also wanted to clarify that when we talk about love from a, the perspective of a psychopath, love is just another tool of manipulation. So if uh, if Daddy Putin loves you and gives you all this love and, and whatnot, it's just a tactic. It's, it's another tactic that psychopaths use on a target. Does that make sense? So if you are unfortunately the target, then uh, you're being loved by the psychopath, not because the psychopath truly loves you, but because you're a, type, a, a target who's being used for a particular end. And so when I talk about Putin as the benign dictator, I'm not saying Putin's really a nice guy. Don't misunderstand me. I'm saying that he, he uses many tools in his toolbox, but with collateral damage, with persons that are, uh, you know, finding out somebody's weaknesses and somebody wants to be loved, a great way to compromise them is to simply uh, shower them with sweetness. They simultaneously fear you to fear the person that you're in love with or to fear the person who's giving you love is, is a powerful weapon. 
Um, an example of this would be Stockholm Syndrome, where you think that they're going to kill you, you're a hostage, you've been there for weeks, and then something uh, ha happens to you, and the next thing you know, you're madly in love with your and you will die for them. Let's march out and be shot to death together. I mean, uh, in the Stockholm case, where the people were held in the bank for uh, long periods of time, they began to fall in love with uh, the, the, their captors and they were ready to die in battle with them. They just, uh, they were completely in love. So that is definitely, uh, it's easy to see how the FSB would be able to do that, to uh, t terrorize people to the point where the next thing you know, they're madly in love with the FSB uh, and are willing to uh, give everything for them because that is the nature of Stockholm Syndrome. So love is just another tool to manipulate the victim. So. I got permission energetically from the FSB to explain all that to you. So there you go. That's how it works. Uh, it's the bloody awful business of spying. So um, I went into the remote last night, as I said, and um, it was regarding uh, making deals with Donald Trump for resi re early resignation. Uh, as I had said in my previous remote, there's been communication between M M M Mueller and uh, Trump's, uh, Trump's legal team, and they have been toying with the idea of resignation uh, to avoid a great, uh, getting lesser charges and an agreement of resignation in order to uh, cooperate with the Mueller investigation. So how it would work is that Trump would agree to a lesser crime, they'll bury all the other stuff, he has to give a full confession and then he would have to leave, he would have to resign. And uh, they might be able to get a plea deal or a lesser sentence for some of the people associated with him. But the problem here is this, and this is what I got last night. He keeps turning down the deal and he keeps, every time they get close to a deal with his uh, team and Mueller, when it looks like they might, may be able to work it out, uh, Trump backs down. So it's interesting that Nancy Pelosi had said in the uh, press conference on Friday, I don't know what he's going to do. She and everybody close to this knows that that uh, Trump's lawyers are secretly negotiating an early exit. So I know there's a lot of fighting back and forth on this channel between Trump supporters and uh, uh, the people who are not Trump supporters. What I will say in defense of the Trump supporters, they've got it par partially right in the sense that this president is being driven out of the White House and they are offering him a pretty, they, at one point they were offering him a really sweet deal, early resignation and we'll bury this. You, you gotta go and you gotta go now. So, um, but unfortunately the door is closing. The door is closing and, uh, you know, uh, this arrest of Stone, this aggressive arrest of Stone is a wake up call to Trump's lawyers that the, the, the door is closing and you better, you better jump on quickly uh, because uh, I think Mueller's going to indict him if he doesn't get out soon. I'm going to do a really quick throw on this. The future indictments. Let's take a look. Lack of a foundation. A man, possibly a water sign. Losing one's home, trade, business foundation. Loss of resources, savings. Communication, possibly messages, mail, email, regarding money. Hope, a judgment coming, money. They followed the money. They followed the money. Angry female, temper, hot, fiery, 
possibly a fire sign. This could be Nancy Pelosi. Nancy's getting impatient, people. Angry young male. This came yesterday. Angry young male. What's around it? Coin, self-reflection, hopes and fears. Angry, angry. There's so much anger here. 30 days, one month. Wands are the month cards. Money. Intercepted communication about money. If Don Jr. is going to be taken out, it's because of emails and email exchanges and also links with money. A judgment is coming within 30 days. This is interesting. All right. So there you have it. Uh, it. It looks like the main area that they were looking at was communication via emails, correspondence, and that they, and that something in the correspondence also linked. Uh, there was a there was a money link that they found. It's interesting. I want to do another remote on how they were able to transfer money. Uh, from foreign bank accounts into the United States through these servers that I had found before. But um, I have a feeling uh, we could be seeing a lot of indictments in the next 30 days. Uh, and I also think there's going to be increasing tension between Nancy Pelosi and the president just because her card comes up inverted. So let's see. Uh, God bless everyone. Uh, thank you so much for the support. Uh, and, um, yeah, let's see how this plays itself out. It's, it's very interesting. All right. God bless everyone. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.